Hey YouTubers, I've been a professional photographer for most of my adult life and I've used a lot of different tripods over the years. And uh, it's really hard to pick out tripods and camera bags these days now that we don't have a local brick and mortar store to go to and see what's available. Uh, so they're one of those things that I find are hard to pick out just looking at YouTube videos or looking at photos on websites. Uh, so I encourage you whenever you see another photographer, check out their gear. You might find something that you really like. But uh, I wanted to share with you the tripods that I have, uh, why I have them, and what I use them for, and why I made the choices I made. Uh, and maybe this will help you out in finding what works best for you. Uh, so without further ado, here we go. So here are the three tripods I'm currently using. At the top, we've got a Gitsu GT2540LLVL. Uh, they quit making these in 2017. Uh, I just bought this one used and I really, really like it. Uh, that has a uh, Benro GH2 gimbal head on it. And that's the one I use for birding and long lenses. Uh, in the middle, we've got a Benro A298N6. It's uh, called a FlexiPod. Um, I bought that one about 12 years ago and it was my go-to and only tripod for many, many years. Uh, I've got a Benro GD3WH geared head on that one. And uh, I use that for most of my freelance work for the museums. And also when I do uh, photograph people's artwork and what have you. And so I'll talk about that one a little bit. And at the bottom is uh, a Benro C2980T tripod with a B2 ball head. Uh, that one also is out of production. Um, it's sort of a carbon fiber version of the middle tripod. And uh, I actually found that one on uh, AliExpress. And that one just sort of stays with me in my vehicle all the time. So I always have a tripod with me. And if I'm traveling and know I won't be using big long lenses, that's my travel tripod. All right, I'm going to start with the smallest and widest tripod in my collection. Uh, this is the Benro C2980T leg set with the B2 ball head. Uh, this combination weighs about four and three quarter pounds. Uh, collapsed, it's about 24 and a half inches long, but the legs extended and the column down, the top of the column is about 53 and three quarter inches off the ground. The head is still available and sells for about $150. And I think it's a pretty good value. It's a decent head for that price. Uh, it will support 35 pounds. The legs uh, are no longer available. This is a, uh, a newer version of my old aluminum Benro. Uh, Benro makes newer legs with similar features, but there are some plastic parts in there that make me a little nervous. I much prefer these older uh, models that were out a few years ago. Anyway, these legs are rated at 26 and a half pounds. Uh, all of my tripods are four section twist lock legs. I don't like lever locks. I know a lot of people do like them, more power to you. Uh, they always frustrate me because they snag on things. And when I get out in the field and I discover that they won't tighten enough to hold the tripod properly because they need to be readjusted. That's why they throw in a wrench with every tripod you buy with the lever legs because they require periodic readjustment. And I don't like that. You've got a small knob that lets you do panoramas. The large knob you loosen to move the ball and reposition it. You get it where you want it. You tighten that back up. And there is a friction knob here. If you loosen that, when you loosen the big knob, this moves very easily. If you prefer a bit more resistance, you can tighten that up. And then it takes more resistance to move this. Um, pretty much all of these ball heads are pretty much the same. Some designs are a little smoother than others. Some will support more weight than others. Um, this setup works really well, and I think it's a good value for the money. One of the things I really like about both my original aluminum tripod, which I'll talk about next, and this newer carbon fiber version is Benro's column setup. Loosen that knob, and of course I can raise and lower the column. But if I loosen this other knob, I can now turn the column at any angle I want. And tighten it up and now I can put my camera here and do copy work 
put a little ballast or a weight on the hook here to counterbalance the camera, and it really comes in handy. And so I use this for that purpose quite a bit. And so uh, I like this as a travel tripod because you can get it down real close to the ground. Uh, you can shoot downward on things. Uh, it's a very versatile tripod that does a lot, and it has good support for a standard, uh, any mirrorless camera, honestly, uh, DSLR and lenses up to 7200 2.8, or maybe uh, if you've got a 300 or 400 that isn't too heavy, it's good support for that. Um, the manufacturers, when they talk about how much weight their system will support, uh, you can put 25 pounds on this and it will hold it fine. But if you've got a, a lens that sticks out a bit, um, those ratings are, are not as helpful. And so always buy more tripod than you think you need. Okay, this was the first serious tripod I bought. Um, let me define what I mean by serious. Um, I had cheap tripods, these little 50 and $80 jobs uh, that were fine for a camera body with a 50 millimeter lens. And uh, I did have a, uh, I believe it's Silk brand, S-I-L-K. I don't think they're around anymore. I had one of those and it was, it was okay. Um, where I worked, we had lots of Manfrotto um, or Bogan uh, tripods. And I used them because they were there and they were free, but I hated them. Uh, the thing I don't like about the Bogan tripods is they have two different style of quick release plates. Now all of these tripods and all these heads have the Arca Swiss standard plate on them. But the uh, Manfrotto or Bogan, I don't remember, they change names and I'm not sure which these tripods were, but they have two different style of camera mounts. One is a small square, a little smaller than this, that's not Arca Swiss compatible. And the other one is a six-sided puck about this big around uh, that you screw to the bottom of the camera and then it goes on some of their tripods. I don't like either attachment method. They're not universal. They only work on Manfrotto tripods. And both of them, if you turn the camera vertically, where you're threading the plate into the bottom of the camera and then hanging the camera off that plate, they would slip and let the camera droop. And so I never liked those tripods at all. Uh, after doing a bit of research, I was making a trip to Utah and I knew I was going to be doing some night photography and some other things where I needed a tripod. And uh, I settled on this one. And by today's standards, this thing weighs a ton. But back then, this was a travel tripod. Uh, this is the Benro A. 298N6 flex pod. It has a Benro GD3WH three way geared head on it right now. This weighs seven pounds. It collapses to 26 inches to the top of the tripod with the column collapsed. It extends to 57 and a half inches. The head still sells today for about 200 bucks, and it's a really nice geared head for the money. Uh, it will support about 13 and a half pounds. The legs support about 18 pounds. Now, when I bought this, this was considered a lightweight tripod. They made a carbon fiber version, but I couldn't afford it back in the day, so I got this. Um, it's very similar to the newer carbon fiber version that I showed you just a moment ago. This one's about 15 years old, and the legs don't slide as smoothly as they once did, but this thing has been in surf. It's been in the uh, Utah desert. Um, I've left it outside doing time-lapse photography for weeks at a time. Um, I've really not taken care of it, and it's held up despite all that. Um, it also has the similar adjustable leg level, and it has the same arm that we can levered out. Um, I use this with the geared head for photographing things in a museum and when I'm photographing people's artwork. Uh, I love the geared head for being able to precisely move the camera on only one axis at a time and I found that putting this geared head on this tripod and using it in the museum sometimes my photos weren't sharp. 
And what happens is there's a lot of traffic outside that building, plus the HVAC unit. Um, if I get a long exposure, say, you know, a minute, two minutes, sometimes my photos weren't sharp. And of course, I'm triggering the camera remotely. Uh, so I'm not touching the camera. I'm waiting several moments for it to settle down after I do touch the camera, taking long exposures. And I would have maybe one in 10 that would be soft focus. Uh, the added weight of this tripod really helps. And uh, even with a bag hanging on this one, I think the old style heavy duty aluminum tripod, I think there's something to be said for that. I, I suspect that the carbon fiber legs are more likely to resonate even with weight on the tripod than the aluminum legs are. So um, I love this tripod for its stability and I love the geared head to be able to control very precisely. Um, I wouldn't want to travel with it though. But uh, what I was doing for a while is switching these heads back and forth and I've got a third head and I was constantly rotating things around and I finally recently picked up another tripod so now I have three different tripods each for a specific purpose. Like I say this is my travel. I don't know what I'm going to shoot. I might need a tripod, tripod. This is my precision copy work and uh, a long time exposure tripod. Let me show you my newest one. Okay, this is the newest tripod that I just picked up a week or so ago, and uh, I'm really excited to have this. This is the Gitsu GT2540 LLVL leg set with the Benro GH2 gimbal head. Now, this combination is actually lighter than my aluminum tripod over here. This combo comes in at about six and a half pounds. Uh, collapsed, the tripod legs are 34 inches long, with the legs extended to the top of the column, it's 58 and a half inches high. The head is still available. It sells for about 375. Uh, that's retail. You can often find them on sale. I think I've paid about 220. For this head. It'll support 50 pounds. Now the legs were made from 2012 to 2017. They support 26 and a half pounds and the leg set was over a thousand dollars when it was available new. Now I'm going to turn this where you can see this a little bit better. What's special about these legs and why I like them so much is I looked and looked trying to find a leg set that had both an adjustable column and a leveling base. And if there's one out there, I didn't see it. I looked and looked. All the ones that have leveling bases don't have an adjustable column. And the reason that's important to me is when I set up the tripod in my bird blind and I may discover, well, there's a bird on the ground, I want to drop this down a couple inches. When I set it up, I usually extend the column about that far. So I've got a little room to work with. Well, maybe there's a bird on the ground. I want to drop this down a couple inches. Instead of moving around in my blind and trying to adjust three legs and scaring the thing off, I just drop it down. Maybe there's a bird up in the treetop I want to photograph, and I really wish it was a little higher. There we go. I really enjoy having an adjustable column. I do like to have a leveling base because I'm rarely setting up on perfectly level ground. And so just loosening the lever, putting it where I want it. There's a nice little bubble level here to help you get it level. Let's see, that's it right about there. And I'm locked in now. Uh, I have a separate leveling add-on that I bought that goes um, in between your tripod legs and the head. Uh, it was made by Lee Photo. And I absolutely hate it. Um, it has levers on it similar to this. And you get it tight enough to where it will actually hold the camera gear steady. And then you can't get it loose. I have several times had to remove my camera from the tripod and bang on that thing to get it loose. So uh, I really can't recommend the Lee Photo product um, based on my experience with their little leveling insert. Uh, this, on the other hand, is just as smooth as it can be. Um, I have a Gitzo monopod that is probably 25 or 30 years old. Uh, it's been up and down 
the football field in the rain. It's been in the snow. It's been to the beach. It's been through heck and back. And uh, it still works great. And so the Gitzo stuff is very expensive but you get what you pay for. And if you can afford to buy new Gitzo gear, go for it, you won't regret it. In my case, uh, my budget's a little tight. And so by buying used and seeking out some of these tripods that aren't made anymore, but have the features that I want, I was able to get all three tripods and three heads for just a little bit more than I would have paid for the legs by themselves. Uh, I really enjoy having the right tool for the job. And so uh, I'm very happy to have these. They make my, uh, my work a lot easier, and it's one less thing to be concerned about when you're on a job and working with a client. And um, I hope you find this helpful. I'm gonna put links uh, for the things that are still available and uh, part numbers for the things that aren't. And uh, I hope you find this helpful. Please like and subscribe if you did. Thank you.